All right, welcome back to the warehouse. I'm gonna go through a quick unboxing video of this XF900. Um, pull out all your loose stuff. <laughs> it's easier to do this if you have two people. Or if you're He-Man like Wyatt. <laughs> now, next step, um, go ahead and snip all of the zip ties. I use dykes um, to do it. Then I want to remove the wheel. Um, be careful though, just watch where the crank is positioned. Um, this one's facing straight up and down, so I can just lift. So I'll have to lift this up to get it off, just like so. Okay, then I can start pulling off the foam. Next, I'm gonna install or put on the handlebars. Um, so first thing I'm gonna wanna do is I'm gonna need to turn around the stem. So in order to do that, I'm gonna loosen these two screws here, this one and this one. I'm not gonna mess with this. Um, so this one's a four millimeter. Like we said in the other video, if you mess with that top one, you run the risk of loosening this stem up and then you'll get some play with these bearings down here and up here. Yep. So just leave it be, and then when you turn that, which way are you going to turn it wet? Yeah, so once I get that loose, almost, then I'm going to turn it, uh, what is that, clockwise? Yeah, so turn it to the right. And what that's going to do is help make sure that this top bolt stays tight as I turn it. Um, and then once I get it over here, I'm just going to kind of Make sure it's pretty close to lined up there, and um, I'll just tighten one for now. I'll tighten the rest later. Then I'm gonna take off these bolts here. Four millimeter, right? Four millimeter again, yep. So once I got this off, doesn't matter which way this puts it, or I put this when I go back on, so I'm just gonna set that down there for now. Um, on these handlebars, um, as I get ready to put them up on, um, it, it, as you notice, there is no, there, there are no markings on this. And so to kind of tell where the middle is, I'm going to kind of just slide this computer around until it looks like I'm about at the same spot, um, on this uphill slope here with the computer. So I'm just going to kind of use that as my gauge. Um, so it's easier to tell on that. I think so that looks about right. Um, so now I'm gonna make sure that the cables aren't twisted up at all. It shouldn't, um, it shouldn't be facing this way. You want the brakes facing down. You'll, you'll know pretty quick and when you try to ride it if you've got it on upside down. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, no kidding. So go ahead and stick that in there and um, I'm just gonna kind of hold it while I get these screws started. Okay, and then once I have them started, um, what I'm gonna do is get this kind of centered where I want it. So I'm just gonna look at it. That looks about centered to me for now. Um, so I'll kind of push against it and use my fingers um, to hold. So I'm, I'm just kind of pinching on the top and bottom and I'm doing that so I can feel the gap on the top and the gap in the bottom. I want it to be evil, not evil, I want it to be even. <laughs> All right, then I'll just finish off tightening this up. 
and I'll come back later and do a final check to make sure I've got it in the right um, kind of rotation once I get the wheel on. But for right now, that, that's good enough. Okay, and I wanna go ahead and grab a 15 millimeter wrench. Um, and I'll use this to take off that metal wheel uh, or the, the metal kind of axle protector. And I'm also gonna grab out of my box my um, quick release axle, which I'll install on the wheel in just a sec. So first thing, I just gotta loosen this up down here. Um, so I just take my 15 millimeter to these two outside bolts or outside nuts here. And all you really gotta worry about is these two outside bolts. Um, so once those are all the way off, this just slides right on out. If I can lift up the bike. Okay. Now I'm ready to go to the wheel and get it set up. So um, what I need to do is take this quick release axle and just kind of notice how I have this on here. I should have two springs, um, just like so. And so I, I'm going to remember that when I take this off, the fat side of the spring goes towards the outside and the small part of the spring goes towards the inside. So it'll be like that when I put it back on. And I've always liked, it doesn't matter which way you put this in on the wheel, but I like to put it on um, this on the rotor side. So the release is on the rotor side. Yeah, release is on the rotor side. Um, that's how we just used to always do it. Spring. So spring first, fat side out, screw on my nut. And then I, do, I just want to get it started. I want it to be pretty loose so that when I um, put it on the bike, I don't have any um, issues just sliding it right on. Yeah, so if you look down there at that, um, that brake, I can pull this out of the foam now, I guess, but um, there's that little yellow spacer right here. Just gonna pull that out. That is important, but And when that's out, don't, don't mash the, the brake. Yeah, do not <laughs> squeeze the brake or else it, um, you'll have further issues. It forces the pads together and it's a pain to get them undone. But, so I just kind of line that up and there's two slots down here on the bottom and it just slides right on. Um, so make you sure it's seated all the way make on. sure it's seated all the way on. Um, and then you can take, so I'm tightening this, um, this right side over here until it's decently tight when I push this down. Um, so when I do that, that should be good. All right, now I'm just gonna finish everything up at the front while I'm up there. So next thing I'm gonna do is install my fender. Um, so for that, I need my four millimeter and a five millimeter. So Jeff, Jeff found that it's easier if you put the, if you install the legs of the fender first, um, it just kind of helps. So I'm just gonna get this started here. This is where it's gonna end up. So I'll stick it there for now. And then um, you, you kind of have to move and kind of bend these arms almost a little bit to get them in place. It's not that bad. No, it's not too bad. Okay, I got that side, this side. Yeah, so I've got those on just finger tight right now. They're, they're not even really that tight, um, but I'm ready to go to the top here. So um, I kind of just put, stick, put a little pressure on the nut on the back side, and I'm able to just loosen that right up. Um, then we found easiest way to put these on is to do the light first on the outside. And it doesn't matter. You can do the light on yeah. the back if you like. We just, the light on the front and then this tab on the back of that fender acts as a nice washer. Let me see if we can get it. Yes. All right. Got that pinched. All right. Okay, so I've got that nut started. 
and I'm gonna kind of hold it with my finger, fingers, and then I'm holding up the light so it's in the right position as I- Or pretty close. You or can, pretty close, yeah. yeah. Can... So you see as I tighten it, kind of likes to lean over. So once I know that that nut is getting pretty snug, I can kind of get my finger up here and just like that. And then I'll come back down here and finish tightening And these are just four millimeters down here. The one up here is a five millimeter. I don't know if I said that before. And your your bike will come with a tool set. Some have these these blue Allen wrenches. Some have like a multi tool uh, that comes with it. So you can use those or whatever you've got in the house if you've got a tool set. And Whoops. Fender on, light on. Fender on. Okay, so I'm going to come back up here to the handlebars and um, do my last adjustment. So. What I'm looking for, um, because I didn't really have any reference before, I want, if you can see how um, this, the, the handlebars kind of slope up right here. And you want that part to actually be sloping up, where right now they're kind of sloping backwards, they're heading that way. Um, so I'm gonna loosen this back up a little bit. And I'm gonna roll my handlebars forward until that is facing closer to straight up, right about there is right where I want it. Um, so they're, they're facing more up and then it has, it makes it so the handlebar ends go back like that. So then I can finish tightening this down. Um, and I'll come back later and do some final adjustments on, I'll tighten up, you can tighten the computer, um, a few things like that, tighten, so now that I got that, I'm gonna move my way back to the bar, or head, start heading back more. Next stop is the pedals. Um, so I'll grab those from my box. Um, and I'll need my 15 millimeter. Uh, the, the newer bikes, they're eventually they're gonna start coming with little, should say little stickers that say left or right on them. So that's the first way. If they don't say that, um, some of the pedals have it right in here on this flat spot. There's a little letter. It'll be an L or an R. L for left, R for right. Um, these ones don't have it, obviously. It's smooth. So next place to look is here on the end. Um, if you zoom in close, you can see there's, on this one, it has an L there, an L there. And there's R. There's an R on this one and an R there. That's another way to tell. The final way, well, no, another way is if you look here on the part where the tool goes on, this part is smooth on this one, and this one has lines. So the one with lines is the left side, and the one that's smooth is the right side. So all of those should tell you. Um, the other way is you can look at the threads. Um, if I'm looking at them straight like this, the left side on the right side of the thread is dropping down and on the right one the left side of the thread is dropping down so any of those methods now right and left what does that mean when you're looking at the bike if you were holding on the handlebars your right hand side of the bike that is your right side so right side is drive side left side is non-drive side um, let me grab my this is a 15 millimeter wrench so i'll start with the right one easiest way i found to put them on is you go ahead and stick it in and i pedal backwards so if you pedal backwards while you're holding on to the wrench part of the pedal then it just spins itself right in if it starts getting hard as long as you know it's threaded right you can also throw the tool on there and keep it spinning and you want these to be pretty dang tight. So I'm gonna put quite a bit of pressure on this to get it nice and tight. Then I'm gonna go to the other side. The other way um, is you can just um, spin it in with your fingers if that's easier for you. Um, so I'll just put this tool and finish it off like this because I like it that way. Okay, once I got those, that's good for now. Um, 
I'm gonna keep on working my way back. The next thing is these, this rack is not attached on the bottom here. So I'm gonna take off these little hose pieces here. And I'm gonna take my, I believe it's a four millimeter. And I will loosen up these bolts right here. All right, okay, got those off and I'm ready to kind of position. Now, these racks are never exactly the right fit, so you kind of have to bend them a and little the bit. The easiest thing is these, with these smaller bars up here to bend those. So if, if you have a hard time getting these back ones bent, go ahead and undo these top ones and put these bottom ones in first, then you can bend these, these uh, front ones back. This one, I think I'm gonna be able to get it, but. Make sure you're super careful not to strip these out either. Okay. So as you can see, I'm still able to thread this in pretty easy. Once I take the pressure of the rack off, it's just easier for me to hold it with the tool. So that's why I didn't really start it with my fingers. But Okay. Got the rack on. Now, the only thing left is to put the battery on and you've, you're done with your basic assembly.